and welcome to another SPSJ uh, online offering from us here in Hereford. It's great to have you joining us. It is indeed. We are looking forward to being with you this morning and we hope you are too. We've got a joint service down at St. Pete. No, yes, St. James. St. James. We're all Both getting together today, which is lovely. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and uh, so today we've got for our online offering, uh, Peter uh, is going to be sharing with you and it's the story of when Jesus was presented uh, at the temple but kind of what we're thinking about today is is about good news mm -hmm. we uh, all need good news we all need good news uh gospel means in effect good news mm -hmm. and uh, so that's what we're we're looking at today and what it means um to kind of you know that jesus came to earth and jesus we say can be in our lives today and, and what does that mean why is it good news mm -hmm. um so we thought to help us in this um we thought we'd show you this little video that Christian in Sport put together as to what it is that Jesus offers to us and why it is such good news. Truck with a win it. Come on, Didier! And he's won it! He's won it! The job of a coach is to encourage, to motivate, to lead. The best coaches will inspire their players. What were Lendl's words to Murray before that Wimbledon triumph? Murray's the Wimbledon champion! What did Minicello say to Jess Ennis to keep her calm and focused during her home Olympics? And so a stadium roars and a nation roars as Ennis goes on to win the 800 metres and with it, Olympic gold! How did Fergie inspire his team to storm back from a goal down and win the European Cup in 1999? Beckham into Sheringham and so sorry! matters who we have in our lives, who we work with, who we share our lives with. We need people in our lives who make us feel alive, who bring energy and encouragement. It's interesting that Jesus doesn't offer success or fame or power or wealth or happiness. He offers life a life that is completely new because our world is broken and messy sport is frequently affected by corruption greed and violence yes or no did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance yes and that brokenness and messiness is not just out there it's in here our world needs new life and this is what Jesus wants to give us. The historical accounts tell us that Jesus was falsely incriminated and then crucified, hardly fullness of life. But they also tell us that he came back to life three days later and is alive today. Jesus said he did not just die as an inspiration for us, but in our place so we could receive this new life. Life that gives true hope. Life that restores us to live as we were meant to live. Life that does not even fear death. Coaches inspire. Jesus does more than inspire.
Well, I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, you know, some amazing achievements from sportsmen and the coaches who inspired them, but none can offer what Jesus offers, that life in all of its fullness. Definitely. And whatever situation you're going in, it is important to remember that, isn't it? Those yeah. Looking for the glimmer, the good news in everything that we do. Yeah, definitely. Um, so in a moment, uh, I'm going to... Uh, share with you the uh, gospel reading which I, I recorded earlier and uh, Peter's going to share with you um, and then we're going to have uh, uh, Matt Redman with Amazing Grace to kind of help reflect on uh, what, what Peter's going to say as well. Um, but yeah, just is there any notices we need to share? Just, just make sure you check out the website, Heather is doing a phenomenal job updating it regularly on our Facebook page. There's always something new on, thoughts for the day, challenges loads going on so make sure you're signed up to the new sheet and everything will be yeah. out and it is regularly updated we've been and working hard we'll put the we'll put that kind of screenshot of how to and the website address for where you can sign up for that new sheet um so the one that went out this last week um it had everything that's going on in february on it we found him which is out. loads found of him. stuff as we begin now to kind of post restrictions begin to open up again and begin to have in-person prayer meetings instead of just online stuff um begin to have uh we're going to do a bit of bible study together um and on our sundays online we'll be doing it as well uh, as in person but we're going to be starting to look at uh, mika from the old testament which is Micah, Mika, how do you say it? How do you I say, say Micah. Micah. You say Micah, I say Mika. That's how the world but goes on that around. note, please, please, don't feel obliged to be worrying about wearing your mask or being safe. We are still taking things really seriously and um, we do respect whether you want to wear your mask or not, but please be respectful of others because I know a few people have commented they are a bit nervous about things. But it's we confusing, do, isn't it, yeah. at the moment? Just confusing. keep yourself safe and do what's best yeah. for yourselves. Yeah, um, brilliant. Well, there we are then. So, um, so we'll cut to me uh, from earlier, uh, say doing our gospel reading. Then we'll leave you with Peter, and uh, we hope you have a, a great week. And uh, as always, if you're watching this and um, you've, we've not met you, do get in touch. We'd love to kind of a know a bit more about on you. The, on yeah, the, uh, we'd love to. And um, yeah, have a great week all, and we'll see you soon. So our reading uh, for today is taken from uh, Luke's Gospel and it's chapter 2 and in it uh, Jesus is uh, young as, and Mary and Joseph are doing as the custom of their day uh, required and Jesus being their firstborn they've got to take him and uh, present him at the temple and offer a, a sacrifice uh, for him. Uh, it sounds a bit strange for us today um, but there we go this was their custom in those days. And so uh, we kind of pick up the story now from Luke chapter 2 and I'm just going to start from verse 25 and it says this, it says, Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit he went into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother, that's Mary and Joseph, they marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Then goes on to say there was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage uh, and then had been a widow for 84 years. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of, his, of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything that was required of them by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child, Jesus, grew and became strong. 
He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. Good morning, everyone. And it's good to be back to share with you uh, again uh, this morning. And here we are in this post epiphany period, dodging around each week around the scriptures for our readings. And Epiphany celebrates the revelation by God of Jesus to those non-Jewish Magi. And the reason why our readings dodge around after Epiphany is because they're also all about revelation. The baptism of Jesus where God says, this is my son. And the gospel reading a couple of weeks ago was about the wedding at the at Cana in Galilee. Uh, and last week it was about Jesus in the synagogue at Nazareth. All things revealing something about who Jesus is and what he came to do. And here today we have another reveal, this time to Simeon and Anna as Jesus is brought to the temple in Jerusalem. And there are revealing words about the good news of God's salvation and revealing words to Mary too. You can picture the scene. It wouldn't have been that unusual, something that happened almost every day in the temple. Jesus had been circumcised at eight days old according to the law and given his name. And now after 40 days and on their way back to Nazareth, Mary and Joseph and Jesus come to the temple for his presentation. And he was brought for two reasons, for the firstborn to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a poor man's sacrifice for Mary's purification after childbirth. And they would have given five shekels, just a few pence, as a sort of redemption fee that acknowledged that the son they had belonged to God. And they made a sacrifice. The law said, bring a lamb and a pigeon, but if you were poor, you only need bring two pigeons. And that's what Mary and Joseph did. It was a poor man's sacrifice. And we get a couple of insights into these ancient ceremonies. There was clearly the conviction that a child, any child, was a gift from God. And that all our children, as it were, have only been loaned to us. And what a responsibility that also places on us, no matter how old our children are. But it says something too about the value and the preciousness of human life, of all human life which is why we fight against prejudice, against injustice, wherever we find it, because all life is of infinite value. And we see that Jesus was born into a very ordinary home. It was the offering of a poor man that Mary and Joseph brought. And no doubt there was in that home all the worries of making ends meet, all the insecurities, the difficulties of making a living, paying the bills, feeding and raising a family. Just another example and a reminder that Jesus shared all human experience and knows all the practical concerns of our lives too. And I find that quite comforting and reassuring. And it was there that Mary, Joseph and Jesus encounter these two remarkable people, Simeon and Anna. And the ordinary becomes extraordinary. And we find in Simeon's song the next big reveal. That this baby, baby would be a light to lighten the Gentiles, would be a revelation and be the glory of of God's people Israel. Something that would have cosmic and personal implications. February the 2nd in some churches is celebrated as Candlemas where candles are blessed and lit to fill the church with light as a vivid visual aid that Jesus has indeed come 
as a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and that he would be, that he is the light of the world. Words that pick up from Simeon as he bursts into the song as he holds the baby Jesus in his arms. And it's to that song that I want to turn to and concentrate for a few minutes. That song of Simeon has been used in Christian worship over centuries. And we assume that Simeon was elderly, but unlike with Anna, nowhere does it actually say how old he was. But his language suggests that he was an old man. He lived in Jerusalem. He was righteous and devout, or as we might say, a man with deep and strong faith. He was upright in conduct and conscientious about his faith and touched by the Holy Spirit. Sovereign Lord, he begins, not the common Greek word for Lord, but Sovereign Lord, a word only used three times in the New Testament. It was a word used of a slave owner who had absolute possession of their servant. Sovereign Lord, he says, dismiss your servant in peace, the release of a slave. So here was an old man, good and with a deep and strong faith, touched by the Spirit long before Pentecost, surrendered to God, looking and waiting for the Messiah, the consolation of Israel. And here he was. Could it really be so? Holding this baby in his arms. And he just knew that the waiting was over. His patience rewarded and he blesses God and he bursts into song. And it's a prophetic song of cosmic and personal implications about the salvation that Jesus came to bring. Look at what he says. And I'm starting at the end. He ends his song by singing about glory to Israel. Simeon, who'd been waiting for the consolation of Israel, saw in Jesus the one who would bring Israel not only consolation but glory. It was from the Jewish nation, God's ancient people, that salvation would come to the world. And it is to the Jews that we owe our saviour. That was the culmination of God's plan, which is why any form of anti-Semitism must be abhorrent and distasteful. God had given Israel the patriarchs, the covenants of promise, the law, the prophets, and now he gives them his only begotten son as their crowning glory, the glory of God's people, Israel. And Simeon says, For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all people, to be a light for revelation. There's that word again to the Gentiles. That's us. Here was a prophetic spirit inspired insight. Simeon, a Jew in Jerusalem, in the temple, realized that the light of Christ's coming would not only be the glory of God's people, Israel, but a light to all people. But that wasn't new. Isaiah had seen it all those centuries before, that God's salvation would be for all those who would come to him. But somehow, over time, Israel, their religious leaders, their teachers had lost sight of this and they got it wrong. Instead of seeing Israel as a light to the nations, they saw the Jewish nation as somehow special and privileged and exclusive, hugging God to themselves and not seeing their responsibility to spread that light to everyone and anyone else. The darkness of ignorance, superstition, fear and sin is just what the light of Christ came to shatter. Jesus said of himself later in his ministry, I am the light of the world. Those who follow me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is the light of the world, not just a privileged minority. And we can't and mustn't keep him to ourselves we can't and mustn't monopolise him or we fall into the same trap as Israel. 
This may not be comfortable or palatable in our multi-faith, pluralistic, secular society, but Christianity is inescapably and unashamedly a missionary faith. We're committed and commanded to sharing and spreading the good news of Jesus. And all of us have a part to play, whoever you are and however old you are. We can't just leave it to the professionals and the full-timers. Because Jesus also said in Matthew to his followers, you are the light of the world. And we share the work by our witness day by day on our particular front lines by our prayers through our support, our work and our gifts, as well as our preaching and proclamation. The good news of Jesus is not for hugging to ourselves, it's for giving away. And Simeon saw that. And finally, there's peace to the individual. Sovereign Lord, he says, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Simeon had been told he would not die before he had seen the Christ. And now he'd seen Jesus. He was ready to go. That word dismiss was not only used for the release of a slave or a prisoner, as I said earlier. It also means to untie a ship so that it can set sail. To take down a tent so they can set off on a journey. To unyoke a beast of burden so it could be ready to begin where it needed to go. There's a real sense of freedom, a sense of release in that word, and a sense of anticipation and expectancy. Simeon was ready to go because he'd seen and experienced God's salvation as he held the baby in his arms. What a wonderful attitude to have, but not one I think shared by lots of people in our society today. Many are afraid to die. Many fear death and are not ready to go. So how can we have Simeon's quiet assurance in the face of our mortality and death? Well, only by sharing Simeon's faith. Simeon anticipated that Jesus would suffer and it was for us, for you and me, everyone, that he suffered and died on a cross. And it's through his death that there is full and free forgiveness for all who put their trust in him. Simeon took Jesus in his arms. We embrace Jesus by faith. And of course, as well as the cross, there's the resurrection, that final guarantee of victory over death and that's why as God's people we need not be afraid of death and the grave because it releases us it frees us it unties us it decamps us it unyokes us from the burdens of this life to the blessings of the next we can sing with Simeon dismiss your servant in peace so what will you take away uh, with you this morning into the next week if nothing else, I hope it will make you more conscious of what gifts children are and what responsibilities we have. And a reminder to the value and infinite worth of all human life. And maybe you'll remember that Jesus was born into an ordinary home, sharing all human experience and in that sense is very much our brother as well as our saviour. But I hope you will also take something from Simeon's song and give a cheer for God's old people. Simeon's song that has cosmic and personal implications. Perhaps a greater awareness of Jesus as the light of the world. And with that challenge, the encouragement to be his witnesses on your front line this week. And perhaps too a greater confidence that whatever the future holds, even to death, we have nothing to fear if we believe and trust in Jesus. And that's all such good news. I read the other day 
at one of the Mondays in January in the UK is known as Blue Monday, the most depressing day of the year. But there's nothing blue about the message of Simeon's song. It's really good news. And I heard the other day too about doom scrolling. Have you ever come across that? It's where you can't stop yourself scrolling on your phone through the distressing, saddening and generally just bad news. And goodness knows there's been plenty of that around. So stop doom scrolling and remind yourself of the good news of the gospel. It really is good news. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the I first Stand.